We're down here at the Greater Sydney Local Land Services Demonstration Farm, sowing winter forages into Kaikuyu. The Greater Sydney region is based on Kaikuyu and Paspalum pastures. These pastures are highly productive and nutritious during the summer months. However, both nutrition and quantity drop off coming into the cooler months. This causes a shortfall for farmers who have to buy hay or other feed to get through this gap. Trying to get establishment of our winter pastures can be really, really challenging. We've put in a demonstration site here so we can showcase some of the ways that you can try and get the best establishment you can. The biggest thing with that is we talk about five key principles. Light, temperature, moisture, nutrients and oxygen. Okay, so if you can tick all those five things off, you are always going to get better success. But what's really important is if you are looking to plant in autumn for your winter feed, is trying to make sure you select the paddocks that you need to do that in and keep them under control. So this is a Kaikuyu site. What we did is showcased and replicated what happens on farms. We get a big flush of feed, okay? We have really high temperatures, a really hot summer. We have moisture. Um, and if you've got the available nutrients and things like that, feed can get out of control. And we've replicated that. So we've got cut heights in different areas. We've kept it down nice and low. And that's the paddocks that we're gonna plant nice and early and keep it under control. The other paddocks we've let get a bit too high. And then we've actually got some that are really high and thatchy. You'll see that having that Kaikuyu under control, the success of that establishment improves a lot. Some of the challenges our landholders face in the area, being small farmers, is access to equipment. Direct drills are quite expensive machines and sometimes not accessible to people due to the cost of either purchasing or hiring. I'm a beef farmer myself. I don't own a tractor and I do most of my ryegrass planting with spreaders and things like that. And there can be success by doing it this way. So here we've used direct drill with a press wheel, which is always quite successful. But we've also used spreaders and just spread on top of mulch. We've actually mulched before and after, and then also used a roller. By using a roller, we're just pushing that seed, getting that seed to soil contact so we can get the moisture, the nutrients, and keep that temperature away because air is our enemy. If you get it onto the soil, it's always going to be cooler and, and protected, and we get a lot more even germination. So looking at the results of the demonstration site, where we had that kaikuyu that was too high and was spreaded seed into it, pretty much the ryegrass hasn't established at all. That was our worst result. As long as it was under control and, and the thatch levels were kept down, we've got good success. If we look at the way that we sowed, direct drill done a fantastic job. You know, we knew it would, tractor drill goes down, places the seed right into the soil, a little bit of soil falls over the top. We have a nice press wheel, which rolls then the seed Okay, and gives us that seed to soil contact. Within seven days, it's all germinating together and it does a great job. What's going best after that is where we have um, kept our summer pastures under control. We've spreaded our seed, then we come through and mulch and rolled it. So the idea of that is that we've got not a lot of thatch to compete with. We've gone through with the mulcher just to try and stunt that summer pasture a bit. And that shakes the ryegrass seed and, and the pasture seeds down into the soil. The roller comes through and then just pushes that, that seed to soil contact again. And we've got really good success. And, and looking at the, the demonstration, I'd say between the direct drill and the mulched and rolled, th there's not a lot between it. They've both done a good job. Farmers that have really good direct drill equipment, the biggest thing they can go earlier in the year when it's hotter, because they're putting the seed in the soil and the soil is temperature buffered and can be protected. People that are only spreading are usually waiting another month or two, waiting for the right conditions and then that's why they're getting success. That rolling has shown to be the, the best result. The worst result we found was wherever the, the cocky was high, like I said, but also we had done an experiment here where we mulched first, then spread the seed on top and left it. That was the worst result as well. Because what we're doing there is we're putting a thatch of dead grass, throwing some seeds on top, and then we're asking them to try and grow roots down into the soil. If we're looking at our ryegrass and we've got success and we've got a good establishment, now there's rules that we want to apply so we get the best out of it. We don't want to go past canopy closure. So don't overcomplicate it, canopy closure. You just look down, if it's starting to go yellow at the bottom, it's not getting sun. They're tillers that are new plants, right? That could have bought and you're going to lose. So do not go past canopy closure for that first grazing. And the earliest you can go in there to graze is what we call the pull test. Grab some grass and pull it and it can't pull out of the soil and we don't want to pull our roots out. So now we've got that, we've got our residual. Once we put the cattle in or the sheep in and we want to graze it down, 
we want to leave four to six centimeters. The reason we want to leave four to six centimeters is because that's where the energy is stored in that plant to be able to recover for the next grazing. That'll allow us to grow back a nice big healthy leaf. It can start to photosynthesize again and that plant will keep growing. After your first grazing, the rules are two to three leaf or canopy closure. Whichever one comes first, that's when you can put the animals back on. So if we stick to those key rules, you'll uh, get a lot better production going through the winter and into spring. So this demonstration was pretty good as it showed different results based on the equipment that we have. The direct drill was pretty good. However, there are other options when you have limited equipment and how to get that seed to soil contact to actually get winter forages growing in your kaiku or paspalum pastures. So if you're a landholder in the area and facing these challenges, be sure to reach out to us.